Reading salutations. I hope everybody is having a good day. And real quick, I gotta do something a little different this week in particular. I gotta read this on my phone. Um, I'm, but I'm, I have the timestamp here. If you do wanna just skip to like my little review and then the discussion that I have with the guys, you could skip straight to this timestamp. But um, yeah, I'm gonna be looking down. So it is what it is. Like, subscribe, hit the bell down so the ghost of the 13 month series doesn't get you. Soft into his live reaction. Had sung you big brain. Did his thing last week and I'm very impressed with him. A little something like Eeny, Meeny, rap in the beginning. Smoke a little pack, but a pack never timid. Church, but I'm seeing it. Curse when I'm winning. She need a new back when it's back, I'm gonna bend it. Slap up some guinea. Ask me to hint it. Watch a nigga black up react, I'm gonna quit it. Swerve in the Benzie. Perfume is Fendi. Bob and move fast, real fast like I'm Ricky. Yes, I'm pretty. Came from the dirt. Showing up a nigga can't handle the work. Van Kells Field. Oh, there's okay, so it popped up right right where Van Kell is. Lady of Van Kell, handsome. He's already on the field. That was sooner than I expected. I guess the cat tower isn't that hard to beat. Where are you off to all by yourself? I was hoping to deal with this on my own. I will I'll go with you. Uh uh really thanks. So whatever Ivanka wants to do is dangerous enough that Ivanka doesn't even want to bring Hansung Yu into the situation, it seems. So that's interesting. It would be a waste of time to, to stop now, so let's just keep going and we'll meet up somewhere later. I'll see you there. Sh sure, let's do that. Lordy S. Ratcha, someone on the enemy team just managed to escape successfully for the first time. Is that right? Yes. Hansung Yu killed Division Commander Hasracha, Haracha and was summoned to a Van Kell's field. It seems like you weren't all that concerned with the enemy with, with the Van Kell's field, Army Corps Commander, and yet I suspect she may very well be the most dangerous enemy. He's thinking. I respect it. May I ask why that is, sir? Well, I know basically where she's trying to get to. I knew he knew. I knew he was playing dumb. If I'm right, the problem is that she's trying to solve... If I'm right, the problem she's trying to solve is beyond what she or I can handle anyway. And if she manages to solve it by some by some miracle, it doesn't I really have anything to do with what I'm after. That's what this Gad Jack Gado saying they're all in it for their own. My only battle my only goal in this battle is to teach that one arrogant bastard a lesson. Our superiors have already decided how the rest of the game will play out. Interesting. Tales use the story, Slave in Utero, Tower of God, Episode 52, Gadok Sang, whatever it's called. You know I can't pronounce that shit. I'll be trying though. Episode 4. Inside the Cat Tower. A hall with many pillars. I love when they just describe something like so literal like that. Just a hall with many pillars. Like really? <laughs> Kun, I can't reach anyone but you. Uh, tracking isn't working either, so I don't know where everyone is. But look on the bright side. At least the light bearers can talk to each other. Is every, is everything okay on your end so far? I've just been, uh, hiding so far. I think the control room's location is automatically sent to the lighthouse. So you guys head over to the control room for now. I'll use my lighthouse to gather as much information on the area as possible and try to find a mouse. We wouldn't be any. We wouldn't be any use in a fight with someone like a division commander anyway. He's, you know, I respect that he knows. I, I made this Tower of God logo thing really big. I don't know why it's so big. Sorry, it's bothering me. And it's behind Bam, but that's fine. A little bit the God part. Um, yeah. I'll use my lighthouse to find a mouse. We wouldn't be much use with a fire wrecker anyways. The best way for us to help is from the control room. Okay, hey turtle, why are you hiding in there making us do all the work? Because I am the brain of this team. <laughs> the brain have to stay alive to the very end. Rack, you're more like a toe, so keep running. Ha <laughs> ha. He's pointing to his head too. What the hell is that slimy turtle saying up saying about me? Keep under keep rack under control, Hockney. He needs constant supervision to make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. Got it. Stop making me sound like an idiot, you two. Stop stop your whining for now and let's head over to the control room rack. You wanna fight, don't you? <laughs> oh brother, is he gonna is he gonna fight? And if he fights, is he gonna like do something good? Is he gonna win? You know what I'm saying? Cause come on man. Cause sometimes we're rack. 
You never know. Anyways. Hmm, fine. What does he mean by brain? Is it something I can eat? Oh my god. There's no way. It's flush it's a frustrating situation, but I'm glad I can reach Hockney at least. I'll need to catch a mouse if I'm going to get out onto the field at the right moment. Yeah, see I know I know I know Guerrero man. I don't know what the situation is like on the field, but I hope that Yama or Bam aren't already against some hardcore enemies. We have to get to the control room before then and we'll try to communicate with the field. But I'll let Hockney and his team deal with that. For now, I need to find a mouse and send someone who might be able to help Bam out to the field. Looks like somebody is kind of shadowing them for what I can tell here. Like, it looks like there's like a, like a figure in the corner a little bit looking down at the lighthouse, so. Stop right there, stop! So these are the two little twins from FUG with the, with the pink and blue hair. They're, they're pursuing something uh, with a mouse. Don't yell so loud, the enemy might hear. But we just found the mouse, and I have to shout so I can go faster. I can't let this chance slip between my fingers. Hey, Namu, wouldn't it just be better if you let go of my hand and ran on ahead without me? What? I may be stronger, but you're way faster than me. But I never once let go of your hand since the day... Sorry, since the day... Wow. Since the battle that day. Ever since that day when we found out that we have a special bond that allows us to use more powerful Shinsu when we hold hands, we've always held hands in times of trouble. We can't let go of each other at a time like this. It's too dangerous. Then stop complaining and run. Whoa! There goes the mouse. Did you see that? There are two mice. Oh no, they're going opposite directions. What should we do? So this, this already seems like a bad idea. Like, I don't think they should split up for like any reason like stay together like that just seems to make the most sense but um my question here i guess is like are they are they weak or 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 like not i guess ranker level separately and it's like you're just very strong as a tandem or is it like they're kind of lackluster apart but together they make up for the sums of the parts that which, the, which each other lack so it looks like one is speed one is power Maybe two together, you know, you get that, that perfect balance. I'm not entirely sure, but it is what it is. Um, it's not a battle anyway. We're just hunting for some mice. We should be fine by ourselves. Uh, wouldn't it be better if we could both go onto the battlefield? See you in a bit. I'll be in the Slayer Candidates field. Hey, what if we run into an enemy? It's okay. I can catch that mouse in no time. Sola! See you on the battlefield. She's like, <laughs> she like has the sparkles in her eyes and determination. Like she going for it. She running after that um that mouse. So we'll see, we'll see what she can do. Because honestly, this just this just seems like a terrible idea. Just like it's not gonna it's not gonna go well. But we'll see. Hey, damn it! Stop! 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 Ah! I'll trap it in Shinsu. There's, there's some lighthouses that blocked it. I guess a lighthouse. Who's there? And this is the guy. One of the. Hey, it's you. Where's the one you're always holding hands with? You didn't. You didn't split up, did you? Oh no, a feline. It sure is fast. I hope Solo's okay. She should be fine, right? If we could catch these mice and get out to the and get out of here, like Solo said, it would be great. But now that I don't have her hand in mine, something doesn't feel right. Still, there's, this is no time to show weakness. I'll block his pass with Shinsu. There. Alright, now if I can just catch it. Whoosh. Squeak! What the? Who did that? I was wondering where that mouse went. Here it is. Oh, Waito-sama. This is not going to be good. White is here, people. He's He has come through. Oh, I was wondering where that mouse went. Here it is, huh? White. I saw the mouse first. I saw this mouse first. Let me have it. But but I need it too. I promise to go out to the field. I have something I need to do. What? The last soul I need to devour is on that field. Soul? Whose? It's a soul from outside the tower here. The most valuable type of soul in the whole tower. You, you don't mean... No. Slayer. We're on the same team. Oh! Oh, White Hama. White Hama. Yo, dead. Death. White said, give me the goddamn shit. I'm not playing with you. 
and then cut off her head. I fucking love it. This is exactly what I need right now. This is what I need. Thank you, White. But but this is what this is probably what the gra the, 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 the 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 wording of graphical content was because that oof that's crazy. Sola, I miss your hand. Sola is oh my god. Yo, this is yo that panel with the arm with just the arm on the ground. That's kind of like it's kind of eerie. Like oof. Ooh, the blood. I keep telling everyone I never take sides. What do you all expect from me? <laughs> so with this mouse, I can go into the battlefield, huh? I'm getting excited. I hope no one else has devoured him already. Juvial Grace. Bam is fighting some Groot looking nigga, some tree shit. He's shooting water at it. He's doing, he's holding his own. He's just he's he's being the back. Oh, he's using his uh his canine transformation, the cutlery sword thing too. It just keeps jumping around. Is it trying to make me waste a turn? Then I'll try using a bow. I'm not sure if it's because I've made the shape before, but it doesn't seem hard to make stuff with Shinsu. With this, I can hit it. Got him. Hit him. Oh, great. It worked. The powers within me have definitely been changing ever since the battle of Calavan. It's only been a short while since then, but it already feels like I could control a surprising amount of Shinsu. And he's like glowing. The auras around him, it looks kind of, it looks crazy, I won't, I won't lie to you, I'm not gonna hate, he doing his thing, he fighting for his life, he looks fucking fierce in this panel, he looks really dope, truly. I heard from Haroon, you push yourself too hard during training, huh? She says you've been fixed in the tr uh, training that you haven't even eaten or rested properly. I know you want to get stronger, but if you keep this up, your body won't last won't last long. This is Han Sung, This is uh, Jin Sung Ha speaking with Bam. So this is a flashback to when they were training together. It seems f it's kind of funny to hear you say that when you're the one holding me, my friends hostage and making me get stronger. I just want to get stronger no matter what so I can get out of this place as soon as possible. Well, if you say so... What do you think it means to get stronger? Being powerful enough to keep your friends out of danger? Some people have the wrong idea that if they get strong enough, everything will be different. But when they reflect on themselves after getting stronger, they've realized they've become far more twisted than they ever wanted. Is he speaking about himself? A monster only... Uh, a monster only... Uh, wow, can I English? A monster obsessed only with turning their whole body into a weapon and focusing on the energy of defeating someone. People like that uh, may be able to save others, but they can't save themselves. Mm, interesting. Um, but in the end, they destroy themselves and those around them. I know better than anyone because that's what I did. Oh, shit. See, he's talking. He's, he's talking about it. Uh, you have an incredible talent. You'll grow much more quickly than you think, even without pushing yourself so hard. But, it, but even if you want to get stronger for someone else's sake, just don't let that power control you. Always be aware and keep a close eye on your power. If you can't save yourself, you can't save anyone. Don't let it control you. So Bam is kind of, you know, thinking about the words of ha of ha Jin Sung, you know, in his mind. While he fights these Groot looking weird tree fucking pseudo wudo ass. <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at, but it's, I don't like it. <laughs> the field. Oh, white has, has appeared. You're looking at Bam fighting these people. Rumble. What a relief. It looks like no one beat me to him. Participant Bab has won the battle. He will now be taking off the battlefield. And boom. Hey, Slayer Candidate. Nice to meet you on the field. White? He has he already gotten out the cat tower? What's wrong? I'm here making a fool of myself playing this silly little game for you. Yet you don't look happy to see me at all. Because I doubt you're here to help me. Ouch. That hurts. I'm the one who saved you from Calavan at the defensive wall before, remember? Uh, isn't that because you want something from me? Hehe, <laughs> you're right. You know me all too well. Why did you come to my part of the map? I told you before, I want to teach you how to ignite that power within you. Let's start. Let's continue with the fight. We started on the hell train. I want to bring out your power and devour your soul at its tastiest. I knew it. That's why he came to my battle, came to my field. I'm curious. I wonder what an irregular soul will taste like. And Bam is just looking back. And it says to be continued. Bam just has like the dot dot dot. Like a, like he's red. Nothing to say. And he's just looking back at him. Oh man. 
Now, what I'm interested in seeing is how will this work in con in the confines of this game and whatnot, like the, this bam protect him while he's training him to use his powers better. Cause white white is like I don't want it, I just don't want to just eat your soul. I want it to eat it at its taste, which means he wants to pull out the best version of yourself, so beat you at your best and eat it and consume it. So it'll be very interesting to see how he messes with the game but also keeps Bam alive so we can eventually consume him. I like I like this. I like this development. Didn't think he would kill Swift from FUG in cold blood just like that, but this is what we need. We need more shit like this. This is perfect. I'm very happy with this. I'm very impressed. I'm excited. Alright, so greetings and salutations. I just want to say that I'm actually I'm actually just me. I wasn't able to find a time to record with the guys, unfortunately, because what with these three weeks, I have to actually kind of record these um, <clears throat> beforehand. I'm not going to be around to stream on Sunday, but we should be back to our regular schedule program sooner rather than later. But yeah, this episode has been a little ghetto. I, uh, <laughs> so I'm not going to hold you guys. I get it. It won't happen again. That's on me. But I do want to speak about the chapter, even though it's just me. Because I do think a lot of interesting things happened here. Uh, if you haven't liked the video yet, uh, if I haven't subscribed, please do so. And uh, hit the notification bell. The bell dance, the ghost of 13 month series will not get you. And let's talk about this current chapter because there's a lot to unpack here, especially when it comes to white and some FUG stuff. There's a lot of little tidbits here and things that have happened that I'm very proud of and very happy to see. I do want to preface real quick by just saying that um, I had uh, I, some of you guys have been asking me some questions about what do you want me about video ideas and stuff, and I'm thinking about maybe uh, making a Patreon for a certain content, but I wouldn't I would lock it though, like so. I'm thinking of putting fast pass content on there, obviously three weeks ahead. But in addition to that, I would put exclusive videos and um, videos that you guys recommended, but I would just keep it on Patreon behind the paywall. If that's anything you're interested in, let me know. Let's talk about it. So, Hansung, you had won his battle against Haracha. That was an interesting chapter with a really long backstory that I think that a lot of us didn't really appreciate because it's like, yo, who are you? I had mentioned in the last chapter, for anyone that hasn't seen that video yet, that I do believe that what's happening here is that a lot of these backstories, well, this one in particular, I don't think it was necessarily about us getting to care and like Haracha as a character. I actually think that what we're going to be doing right now is building up Yas Racha as this beast tamer, if you will. You know how Calavan was known as the human collector? I feel like, you know, human what's kind of the operative words where like with yes ratcha he seems to be subjugating these different types of species he's a feline person of the lobo bia family which controls you know divine water beast shin shin i can't remember what they're called shin -hue, you know i'm talking about like like the steel eel and stuff like that you know you have your houndborns or canine people Tura, and you know you have all kinds of species and races but it, even though caliban obviously had some somewhat different than the human type of people inside of his uh as quadrant he was known as a human collector and it looks to me like this guy's more like a beast tamer so we'll see what it is what i find interesting about the chapter immediately is that it seems that a vankel whatever it is that a vankel has to do a vankel doesn't want han sung yu around for it uh, han sung yu is obviously trying to help and be helpful after winning the battle that he had but it seems to me that a vankel Whatever it is, it's dangerous enough or enough that it, I guess, I'm not called this a want to endanger Hansung Yu. Hansung Yu might not be ready for it, so it is what it is. And then I think what adds to that is that Yas Rachi immediately comments that he, she, that he basically gets what she's trying to do, but whatever problem that she's trying to tackle is beyond even him. So it's kind of like, it's like a good luck, you know, this, I, you know, even if they manage to like, you know, get to where they need to get to and manage it, it has nothing to do with me. I can't really solve that. And he's like, his lesson is to teach a certain bastard a lesson. The wild, untamed dog, Slayer Yama, if you will. That's kind of how I interpreted it. So, yeah, it'll be that. Now... <laughs> There was this one part of the chapter I thought was really funny that happened next when they just called it, like, inside the cat tower, a hall with many pillars. Yo. 
What is with the description for some of these things? Like, you don't have to say that. You could just say inside the cat tower. A hallway with many pillars. Are the pillars significant? Like, I just find that funny because it reminds me of when it's like Redbeard. And all of these regulars working for the Jihad Empire. And he said, like, the two others. If you couldn't even bother to name them, they don't have to, you don't have to. Just put them in the background. You do get to see Rack, Hockney, and, um... Elaine here together. I don't know if that's significant moving forward, which means that oh sorry and and um and Kun obviously and stuff. So I don't know if this it's significant that we're actually gonna get to see these regulars do something important. It's hard for me to ever count out Aguero. I said ship. I've been Aguero. Sorry if I said that. I don't know. I don't know what I said. I don't know. Uh, to count out uh, Kun Aguero because he's so smart and 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 so like he's always gonna be useful as a light bearer in that in that sense. So. It is what it is. And he makes fun of Rack by saying he doesn't have a brain. And Rack's like, what is that? Is it tasty? Can I eat it? No, you dumb fucking turtle. <laughs> you can't, can't eat. You can't. I mean, you can eat it, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you want to eat it? So no. And Kun is obviously spending a lot of time thinking the game. And then we get to the part where those two little like twins who are holding hands or two characters who are holding hands and whatnot, right? When they found a mouse. One... One of them is stronger, one of them is faster, and together, they're the, you know, what what's the, what's, what is actually the term? Is it, the, they're the greater sum of their parts? So it's like, individually, while they're both still impressive and have like a specialty, so one is probably more strength related, one is more, probably more speed related, in conjunction with their hands holding, they probably offset any individual weaknesses by combining their Shinsu ability on top of, um... Uh, speed and power so yeah they're just kind of running around and they're doing stuff they're running because they found the mouse so they actually split up they split up and they're all trying to get to bam's field so sola goes off right and what is imp extremely important here that happens and i was like I was dumbfounded and that this is not this is not not yes ratchet's guy in the chair just being like you know Whatever it was, the blue-haired ones, uh, not not Sola. I don't remember this one's name for whatever reason. But tried to block the Shinsu pass of the of the mouse, and you know who stepped up? It was White. White's like, I saw this mouse first. This is the mouse he was chasing initially. Let me have it. But he's like, I need it too. I promise to get on the battlefield. And White just like basically, I have something to do. There's a soul out there in that field. I need to I need to devour. He said. He, then he then he basically it's, he basically explains. An irregular, you know, it's a soul from outside, you know, where the tower inhabitants are and stuff like that. It's like one of the most valuable souls that you could probably find in the tower and everything. He's like, you couldn't possibly mean this. And after when he goes, no, no, don't do it. Like we're on the same white decapitated him or her gone. A FUG member that came here in in in. in with the, you know, <laughs> not ability, but intention of saving Hyde and Sung and doing stuff in relation to FUG and opposing the Jihad Empire, White straight up murders. Straight up. And then White says, I keep telling everybody I don't take sides. What do you all expect from me? And White had said something about being a predator so he doesn't expect people to stay by his side longer and everything. And he's like... What this is here's what's important about me. I had white wrong in the sense that I believed that maybe he wouldn't have done anything to outright directly oppose FUG because I don't think he's a fan of the Jihad Empire for any reason, for any stretch of the imagination. So I was under the impression that he would do things that might hinder us, annoy us, and stop us, but to straight up body somebody who seems to be a more upper echelon FUG type member or ranker at the very least cold-blooded but i love it this is what i'm this is the type of shit i want to see from this character this is who i believe white is so like i want him to be doing these devious underhanded things and tactics to get what he wants he's selfish and he wants to you know take down idea at some point or whatever so it was gruesome it was pretty bloody all things considered seeing that one panel of just the hand and you know, every week I ask you guys, what's your like, what's the most memorable panel or favorite panel that you have? For me, from artistic standpoint, everything is just a hand, like the blood there, like so symbolic, like of what it means. And just a side note, not that I think this actually is a thing that SIU was planning to do, but it is funny that the hand is there because then 
the couple of chapters prior to that when he was fighting the Green Goblin, I'm somewhat different from other humans, dude. He was slicing off all his hands, too, so. White saying that he wants the soul of Bam and everything, and him actually acting upon it is very good and refreshing to me, because I feel like while his character may have been a little bit lost for a time and murky, and he was obviously playing along to get back his original power, I feel like this is consistent with his, his character, who he was and who he's betrayed. I would argue that Karaka has not been true to the Karaka that we know and love have been experienced throughout the narrative of Tower of God. We've been getting, we got some type of fucking imposter. But yeah, Bam is like fighting these group people. He actually pulls out the canine, houndborn, cutlery, <laughs> the sword that he made um, when he was fighting Godot, when he cut off Godot's leg, who was a high ranker. Which is kind of which is kind of funny and everything, but then he actually pulls out the bow, and he makes it with Shinsu, and uses the bow and arrow. Now the bow and arrow didn't seem too significant, but I felt like he actually, from what I can tell, he shot the bow and arrow, and then he controlled its direction. You know, so I thought maybe he was gonna em emulate the teleportation stuff, but I don't think he had that like other Thor now or whatever, and they basically. What he was saying and he explained was that, that, you know, right before or around the time he was or when he was fighting Caliban, he feels like the powers inside of his body have been kind of changing and he's like feeling stronger and everything. And after that, we get a flashback back to Hajin Sung and Bam's training and kidnapped and everything. And he's like, you know, basically Hajin Sung is showing that he cares about Bam and he's telling him not to overdo it and not train it like he's kind of and Bam's like you guys have kidnapped me and you held me here against my will it's kind of funny for you guys to say that and everything and this is kind of the part that I'm that I'm talking about in a lot of ways um where like this moment right here like this kind of answer like it's I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna read it verbatim so I just found it here sorry I'm looking for it he said it seems kind of funny to hear you say that when you're the one when you're the one holding my friends hostage and making me get stronger I want to get stronger no matter what so I can get out of here as soon as, po soon as possible. That is the that is the energy and that is the portrayal that Bam had towards Hajin Sung that I would argue throughout the entire narrative of, of um, Tower of God until Caliban in the last station I quote unquote defeated him and Shani hit him with the sneaker sneak and that's when the character thing changed. And then you know I always argued that nothing Karaka did or said should have made you think that he cared about Hajin Sung. It's not unbelievable, but that's you have to put you as your job, slave in utero, as the artist and writer of the series to make me believe that. It's not believable. I can I actually believe that Hajin Sung cared about Bam and Karakas, Bam especially, because I've kind of seen it there. Like moments where like Bam got away from him because him and Aguero did something very smart to teleport from him, and he's like, I could still get y'all. But you know what? Well done. Good job, Viola. Like, you know, I'm rooting for you, type B. Like, you can always see that he had some pride and cared about him. I would argue with Bam, no. But this conver but this conversation, but this backstory is an insert that happened after the fact. So now they're trying to change that perception. So when Hodgson Sung is speaking about getting stronger and getting powerful enough to keep his friends safe, people get, you know, the wrong idea that as long as you're strong enough, people are different. But then they get stronger and they've become more twisted than they ever realized. A monster only obsessed with uh, turning their own body into a weapon and focusing on defeating somebody. You know, they say that people like that can't save themselves and in the end they destroy everyone around them because I did that. I know better. I made this mistake. And after basically just giving him another lesson on how his power can you know can be too much but don't let it corrupt you and change you we actually saw the high the high the high rank no, not high ranker the cha family cha family am i good ha family i think that was chai chai ha the old man who was not a regular who was a regular a regular who didn't become a ranker because he wanted to and, and top bam zero and everything so yeah sorry so yeah um this is so this to me is just another kind of moment of beating beating kind of beating in a nail is already hammered in but because it came from Hajin Sung and he's saying that like you know he's saying it Bam's internalizing this one a little bit differently it's kind of funny that two Ha family members actually end up telling this now that I'm thinking about it but he's basically trying to make sure the power never controls him and stuff while he's fighting these I am groups and then who comes to the field lo and behold who appears 
like a thief in the night. I'm gonna steal your soul in the night. <laughs> it's White Horse Hammer. He comes through and he's like, "All right, no one, no one, no one's beating him. He's cool." And I did find this a little interesting because I didn't feel like Bam had this energy towards White recently, a little bit during the last station. But Bam's actually off put when White pops up by himself where I thought that because they were temporarily all on the same side I was actually a very um very very impressed that Bam was like I don't trust this what he got out the tower rather quickly like no, like Bam's actually genuinely suspicious off rip I like that that's important I think that's a good that's a good moment for him and he's like I doubt you're here to help me and he's like, oh, you know, I saved you in the wall and everything and blah, blah, blah. And after he's like, you want something else from me, right? He's like, and after you're like, he, he'll teach him to ignite the power within him. He's going to start his training. and He's going to devour his soul out his tastiest. And he's like, I knew it. That's why he came to my field. And that one panel of him saying, I wonder what an irregular soul tastes like. With Bam just kind of looking back. Ooh, so menacing. He's hungry. <laughs> he's going to curry some souls up. So like, it is truly, really and truly amazing that white is keeping his energy and i think he's the monkey wrench and i love it and that's why i said he's kind of be the x factor i kind of it's a lot of the things that i'm ha i think i thought were going to happen have been happening however i definitely didn't think he would have straight up killed somebody like that in fug i don't know how the elders would take this i'm an elder let's say sola and the partner were like useful and you did that because of what i'm if i'm part of fug and i'm like a higher up i'm looking at you sideways like yo don't you be doing that shit like we don't even have the numbers and notoriety and things of that nature to go against to, to, to do that to like waste useful people so white you know smart enough but i thought this chapter was pretty was really good i thought it was incredible in its own right um had fun but yes it was a good chapter i enjoyed it and in terms of the piece of dialogue and probably one of the things that made me like whatever text was my favorite Probably what Hajin Sung was saying, because as I get older, I start to truly understand the wisdom of a lot of people who are older than me, the things that I've heard when I was younger and stuff. And when I'm trying to speak to somebody about something that they're going through and navigating, and it's like, I, this, I'm trying to teach you what not to do because I went through these very pitfalls. Like for example, if one of my young boys are talking to me about navigating the dating market or the dating scene or girls or whatever, it's like, listen, I, I've been there. You know, I've been there. I've been young and lost and kind of caught up in the world in the, in the, in the storm of figuring yourself out and all this stuff. And I try to, you know, it's hard for it's hard sometimes when you're young to really get that internalized. So like, Ha Jin Sung is saying like, listen, I thought that I was getting stronger to protect people and I kind of became a monster as a result of that is something that I could understand and get. So like him having these moments, I always truly appreciate him. He's a really good character, all things considered. I think he's a good master. This chapter was like, was an, uh, was about a nine, uh, uh, 8.5 out of 10 for me. And I just want to read the blog post, wrap it up. And again, I want to, I do want to say like, you know, it is what it is. Life is out. Life was busy. So this episode and this, um, podcast of the Mule Love Chicken Love, of uh, uh, Chicken Love Pod, wow, Mule Love Chicken Love Club podcast. There you go. Say it slowly. Jesus Christ, Naya. Um, and this live reaction, it's a little ghetto. So my, again, my, I'm sorry, but if you guys stuck, stuck it out and hung out here, um, while this was premiering or just watched a lot after the fact, I appreciate that. Thank you. It will not happen again. You have my word. Now, hello. So the picture here is a picture of White, um, drawn by SIU in his blog post style kind of sketch form, which I like. It looks he looks very menacing here. Oh God, I love it. Hello everyone. This is season three, chapter uh, seventy three. I'm feeling on a weekly basis again now that I'm back. How the webtoon medium is a constant source of tension every week. I think about how enjoyable this week's chapter will be every week, but ends up not quite as enjoyable very oft fairly often. So it can be difficult. This story is continued on a weekly basis by making a manhwa that is both fun to read on a week-to-week -week basis and to, and to marathon is really difficult. I'm sorry, it's just still hard to get it right. I agree that that's actually a really hard balance. So that's one thing about like the weekly writing slog that I've always like. You have to you have to create a kind of contained chapter narrative that you can kind of follow on a week-to-week -week basis or bi-weekly or monthly, whatever the case is, but enough 
that you are able to leave an important enough or meaningful enough cliffhanger that wants me, you know, wanting for more. So mm -hmm. that is a difficult balance to achieve, 100%. I received the, um, so he talks about being vaccinated um, when you got, when you, at the time of the chapter, I don't want to say the word because you know how YouTube is. Uh, I actually gave, uh, mar making the appointment some thought, but since I've been working outside more often, if I caught, mm-hmm. It would affect my work, so I decided to get this to get the, to get the um, vaccination. I was worried about this shot before, but it hurts less than I, than I thought it would. I should probably wait a bit long to say, but I'm feeling fine right now. Um, vaccination is another phase where individual choice should be respected. So saying who received it and who hasn't received it yet isn't isn't something that's very meaningful yet. Anyway, I hope that a happy ending for both these frustrating times and this unending fight to bring you guys enjoyment. There was controversy in, in, in South Korea in regards to the AstraZeneca mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, and, and SIU is not an, an anti-vaxxer. I said I would dial back on the blog post, but I keep writing about my personal life here. <laughs> I hope you guys stay healthy, have a happy week, and I will see you next week. Oh, I hope he's good, man. Take care of himself. I'm fully vaccinated, by the way, and I feel fine. So if anybody's kind of, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but if anybody was kind of worried about it and everything, and you know, I can tell you that I got it and I feel great, you know since for a long time but yeah great chapter that was a blog post thank you guys for um sticking this out in this very incredible <laughs> different episode but we'll be back with some more greatness shout out to siu slave in Utero, doing his thing tower god so far as it's been back i've been impressed it's a lot better than the beginning of season three i'll give you that much you guys take care you're